Nav Madharu, osteopath and humanitarian, welcome to the JSO interview. Thank you, John. You took rather unkindly for me wanting to know more about this tag of you being a British Asian mm -hmm. of Kenyan origin. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Why? Um, I'm very proud to be British, very proud of my Asian heritage and, and proud of the fact that I have, you know, um, links to Kenya. But um, I don't like to get into labels. Why? Because uh, class me as an Asian, next you want to know my religion and, you know, my political affiliations and these kind of things are uh, details that are not important to the work that I do. Uh, because I don't put conditions that a person that I reach out to help must be from a certain race or a certain religion. Um, you know, these, I just don't want to get into that. Well, yeah. perhaps you'll accept one professional label, which mm -hmm. is osteopath. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to say that f perhaps that means that you're a bone doctor. Mm -hmm. But you tell us more about what you in particular do as an osteopath. Um, in, in a layman's term, yes, you'd class an osteopath as a bone doctor, but we're actually um, medical physicians who specialize in musculoskeletal health. Um, and I specialize in pediatric um, osteopathy, which is dealing with children. Um, so as a, a medical um, person, you know, my job is to reach out and help uh, empower people's health. Children, and I know that you have gone on to set up something called the Divinity Foundation, mm -hmm. an NGO, and mm -hmm. we'll talk about the role of NGOs in our society later. Mm -hmm. What does your particular one do? Uh, Divinity Foundation I set up in 2008, and it's an NGO that reaches out to empower and help impoverished, abandoned and orphaned uh, children and impoverished mothers, um, either living in the slums, the streets, the rural areas, um, and currently we're working in Kenya. Okay, 2008 is a significant date because mm -hmm. this change in your world view mm -hmm. uh, came with you coming back to the motherland, so to speak, mm -hmm. and experiencing mm -hmm. the trauma of our post-election violence. Mm -hmm. What did that do to your life? What kind of decisions did you make thereafter? Mm -hmm. I actually, uh, when I entered uh, humanitarian work, it was in 2005 with an NGO, and my first posting was in Kenya. Um, and they sent me out to Pokot um, and into the slums. And um, it gave me a real wake-up call, um, because when I went home, I decided that the kind of uh, a high life that I was living, you know, surrounded by designer labels and, you know, um, social parties. It was uh, the kind of life where I was cocooned um, by my high life. And so what I saw gave me a wake-up call that, you know, there is real work to be done out there. There are people in dire need. And if I'm going out and spending 500 pounds on a Gucci bag and that 500 pounds can feed so many people, what the hell am I doing with my life? Um, so it, uh, it totally just changed my life. Um, so people talk from going from rags to riches, I kind of did a flip. I, I kind of gave, gave up my riches um, and decided that really my life would be better if I helped as many people as I can with what I have. So now you run an NGO, mm -hmm. you help fundraise mm -hmm. and you have, have you abandoned the hands-on experience? Is your day-to-day -day living just dedicated to getting more dollars to the cause and you have a team that works for you? Um, everybody that works for Divinity Foundation, including myself, we're all volunteers. Nobody gets a wage. Um, I'm hands-on. Um, I go out every day in the slums. I'm hands-on working with children and mothers. Um, and I have a busy, hectic uh, life because I'm hands-on in, in um, actively helping people, um, holding seminars and lectures to raise awareness within the medical profession and society. Right, so you raise money to, make, to be able to assure yourself yeah. a living by doing other things. Therefore Not assure myself a living, you, no. You, you divide your, day, your, your work life into two, yeah. professional and then humanitarian. Is that correct? Um, no. My life is now just doing humanitarian deeds uh, as an osteopath. Right. Um, it's who I've become. I walk the walk that I talk, you know. 
um, Gandhi said something very uh, poignant that you must be the change you wish to see in the world. So if you're unhappy with the way the world is, if you're unhappy about how children are treated or how animals are treated, stand up and do something. And that's what I've decided to do. Street children. Mm -hmm. What do you do for street children? Um, if we look at street children, let's take street children in, in Kenya, in Nairobi, daily. Um, we see kids on the streets begging for food, begging for money. You see children walking around with bottles of glue, you know, um, sniffing out in a daze, numbing their reality by sniffing glue. And what does the person who can do something do when a child comes up to them asking for food? Uh, a lot of people, a majority of them, will just ignore that child. Um, if you live in a cocooned life and if you want a society where tomorrow you can walk the street without being afraid that you're going to get mugged if five years from today i want a society where i know that there is going to be peace and i am not going to be walking down to a uh, sarit center and somebody's going to pull out a gun on me well today's children that are on the street are, are going to be tomorrow's thugs unless the attention you give to them is positive you don't have to give a child that's begging for, for money, money. Why don't you carry a box of biscuits with you in the car? And you see children hand out food. Um, why don't you give them positive attention? These are children. I would say perhaps that's a very sort of romantic notion because you see this whole idea of people driving around with a sort of a year supply of goodies to mm -hmm, dish out to mm -hmm. people and the problem would go away. I think that social problems surely should be dealt by, by government. Definitely. Um, you don't find street children in, in the West. Why? Because there are proper child uh, welfare policies in place. Uh, there are homes for children that are set up by the government. So surely, yes, the Kenyan government needs to take action um, into streamlining the way that it deals with abandoned street kids. Exactly. But because also they're, they're, Kenyan they're, 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 society. But also, uh, Kenyan society, like uh, you if you have been here long enough, mm -hmm. it, it is possible that with your window rolled down, mm -hmm. somebody could sort of like, um, if you don't respond positively to mm -hmm. their demands, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. sort of um, bung some uh, feces you your way. You do hear that, or yes. Or indeed uh, some sort of acid that might blind you. Yeah. So the idea that um, uh, I'm, to, I'm, I'm saying that you have a utopian notion of our existence mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that is uh, unlikely to come to pass in our own lifetimes. Why does a child react negatively to a person? If, if they go up to an adult, now adults are supposed to be role models for children. If a child goes up to an adult, yes, okay, they're holding feces and they're going to slam it in your face or in your car if you don't give them money. But hey, how much does it cost to buy a box of biscuits? You know, 300 shillings, 350 shillings? And that's nothing, you know. Um, I walk around with biscuits and, you know, juices and stuff. So when a child comes to me, I'll say, hey, I don't have money, but hey, how about this? And they're really happy. Right. So you're suggesting food as opposed to money might yeah. be a sort of panacea. Mm -hmm. right. Now, I, 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 you should tell us that you go beyond mm -hmm. the handouts mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and actually when street children come in some sort of d distress, mm -hmm. I do believe that you run medical camps that mm -hmm. look after them. So perhaps you could evoke that. We run, uh, Divinity Foundation runs um, large medical camps. It's a two-week program that's run three times a year where we have volunteer doctors from Europe and Australia that come into Kenya purely to provide their services for free to help impoverished children and mothers. Um, during these camps, we'll assess uh, your health care you know, for free, we'll treat you for free, we'll give you medication for free. And if you need to be referred for further tests, or care, then we do that as well. Um, we work with uh, several orphanages where uh, rescued street children come in who are traumatized. Either they've been beaten up really badly or um, they were raped, you know, by people or um, they've suffered trauma, physical and emotional trauma. And when these children come in, the, you know, never judge a book by a cover because when you see these kids, they are hardened kids. They act tough.
But when you start to work with them and peel under the, 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 the layers, that's a very innocent child that's you know holding on to a lot. So the work that we do with them um, is really um, counseling and reassuring and giving them the confidence to trust, to trust the society around them. Uh, to learn how to be around children and be a child that happily plays rather than um, thinks that life is a competition and you must you know be a thug and a bully to to get something you know so it's retraining them totally and, and instilling um, trust <laughs>